glad you can join us. You know, over the last 40 years, my family's been filming winter range mule deer in Wyoming. Now, the last 10 years, I've been documenting several great big, huge mule deer that have come in on the winter range. These bucks are found in public land and are hunted. You know, a lot of times these mule deer bucks, year after year, come on the winter range, generation after generation, and if you got good management, they will look the same year after year. Also, particular areas will produce good quality mule deer that have a genetic look to their antlers. Look at these two bucks right here. I guarantee you they're brothers, even down to having the same cheater off the same back tank. They probably are a year or two years apart from each other, now look at the buck on the left. I videoed that buck this last winter on the winter range. A good quality 190 type mule deer. Now the buck on the right I videoed 15 years ago in almost the same identical area. If you look, the two of them have similar antler configuration. Granted, the one on the right is really a lot larger than the one on the left, but still, I guarantee you these two bucks come out of the same gene pool. Look at the buck on the left. I took that buck goal oh, two years ago. He's narrow, heavy, and he's got some cheaters. The buck on the right is almost identical. I filmed him 10 years ago. A lot of times that trait, like narrow and high and heavy like that, will come year after year, generation after generation, if you got good management. You know, about 11 years ago, I videoed a buck that I uh, tagged corkscrew. And the reason I did is because he had a dropper that's twisted down like a corkscrew for about a foot. Actually, he had double drops. Like, if you look right here, you can see him. The other one is a little short. He has a 190 mainframe. Got a cheater off one side. Well, you know, this buck was a really a special deer. Very unique. Uh, had a lot of character. Now, this is 10 years later. Now, he'll pop his head up here in a minute, and you'll look and off on his uh, passenger side of his antlers, you'll see that dropper. It's quite a dropper. In fact, if you look at this buck, you'll notice that his rack configuration looks a lot like corkscrew. The racks on the two bucks look similar. Even though they're probably 10 years apart, I'll guarantee you that these two bucks are related one way or the other. Now when he pops his head up here, you can look and see that he's got a big old dropper on one side and it's got a ball on the end of it. Really unique. Now I want you to watch something here. He watches off to his left, two does start running. And he's got his head down feeding, but watch how he picks his head up in a split second, looks right at them, looks around to see what's going on, and then, oop, then he leaves. You see that? He throws his head up in a split second. He looks at the two does. His ears are going. He's trying to listen to what's going on. He looks to the left of him, makes sure there's nothing there. He then spins around and leaves. Now as he goes, look, I've got corkscrew on the right and him on the left. Look at, they're almost identical in rack size and conformation. Isn't that unbelievable? And these two bucks come from the same area. They've got to be grandfather and grandson. And that's what you've got to look at in different areas is that if you can find an area that produces bucks like this and if it's got good management year after year you're going to have quality trophy hunting.